Hey guys, welcome back to Trek Yards. He's Commander Cocking. He's Catafoli, and we are warping onto your screens right now, right? Uh, maybe trans warping, corridoring, cur cur courier, courier. Yeah. It seems it seems like traveling these corridors that we're going to be talking about is as risky as traveling the internet and dodging all the crap out there. But Just luck saying. Luckily, our shields are over twenty percent, and we can morph through it, so we're fine. Don't worry. Even though we say we can't, we can. It's fine. Yeah, so in this latest episode of Star Trek Discovery, episode 12, there is a tide. Um, we find out that, uh, we find out the reason that they've been alluding to the problem with Transwarp. 50-50 um, shot of going through it, we heard in one episode. The other episode said that the, you know, even the couriers won't risk using them. Didn't know why. So this episode, because they're in a dire situation to catch up with Discovery, who Spore jumped out to Starfleet Head HQ, Michael and Book use one of these corridors to travel to Starfleet Headquarters. And we find out the reason that it's so risky. And why is that? Well, someone had a trash day and just threw it all into those corridors. But it was like galactic trash day. Now, obviously, we're assuming Transwarp, which is one of the problems with this, that Discovery... While better this year, hopefully people won't won't you know, deny that, they are being a certain vagueness. I don't think they want to commit to lots of things, which then, then confuse us when they say transport was 50-50, which is so specific. It's like, what does that even mean? In episode one, when Bookship gets a, you know damaged, he says what forms of FTL he has. He has warp, he has transwarp, and he has, uh, I believe, one of the slipstream variants. And that one, they say, he hasn't even got the fuel that could do it, and no one does. That tech is available. Can't be used. Transwarp is too dangerous, I believe they said, and then warp, they haven't got a lithium, it got broken. So we've already established what FTL we have, and given the fact that they haven't really mentioned anything else, and yet we can't go to any other systems, implies that they're all kind of off limits in one way or another. And then suddenly, yeah, they come out with this Transwarp 50 50 thing. Okay, fair enough, because we know they're both man made, you know, you can create your own tunnel, or you can go through a existent. You know, transport conduit style, either sort of organically there or, or stabilized via Borg, etc. And we've been wondering the entire time. There are so many alternates, even those one-offs like Seth's or Steth's ship that can do its cool thing. There's so many one-offs in Voyager, especially where it shouldn't be an issue. You know, there should be dozens of ways, even if they're a varying degrees of success. And they create this sense of scarcity, where the whole fundamental is that travel is hard, and dilithium is the cause ability to go to FTL, hence the supply and demand problem. And the spore drive is the thing that changes the game. And so it's a bit weird when we're super far away from HQ, and yet they can still get back within a minute. May maybe two, because the spore drive is instant, and they're only seconds behind the other ship. In fact, arguably, it takes them less time because they managed to close the gap. It's a bit weird, Stuart. It's a, it kind of... It, it's very weird, and I like your argument there. It's a bit faster, because they had to see Discovery jump, go, oh shit, we missed it. Hmm, what are we going to do? Should we should we risk one of the corridors? Yeah, probably not a good idea, but it's the only option we have right now. Okay, let's do that. So they're killing all this time. <laughs> um, and then still be able to find one, get in it, and then get out before Discovery makes it through the shields of start of uh, HQ. And managed yeah. to close that gap, because they say nine seconds they get to it. So they managed to pass the Viridian and close the gap. We've speculated all along that there might be debris or wreckages of ships in those tunnels for whatever reason, just because of the, the some kind of conflict that was happening. Um, and sure enough, that's exactly the case. Mm. There is debris everywhere. Big debris. Um, yeah, like big chunks of starships floating around. Now, I just want to address something right away. Apparently, Trek culture said that this is a result of the Gorn messing with subspace, um, which was addressed in like the first episode uh, where she, she, she talks about coming through a wormhole. He's like, you sure you want to mess with that? The Gorn, you know, wrecked like three parsecs of subspace doing that. So the Gorn were trying new experimental methods, employing, we would assume, wormholes to travel. Um, and messed up subspace as a result. This is not that. This is different. And it is weird, because he calls it the Courier Network, although that is clearly not a name for a... That's clearly not an FTL name. That's their name. That's what they use it as. And I doubt they discovered a brand new subspace layer that, you know, no one ever talks about except they use it. Except they don't use it because they say they don't use it. So, we, so it makes sense. It's an existing FTL 
thing that they risk using, but it's kind of like their preferred way of risking it. Hence, we don't like to use it, but it's the one we... And given that we've only been given three FTL stars in the entire series, it makes sense it's Transwarp. And it does look relatively like Transwarp. It's not far off. It's not some radical, absurd thing. It probably looks closer to Transwarp than the warp effect in Discovery looks to warp, ironically. And then, then obviously, you got the double equation of the Viridian used a similar thing. It had to have. And a ship that's absolutely massive. And it didn't seem that damaged, I'll be honest, in going through a tunnel-filled debris. And it also managed it, which, you know, they do say, wow, they risked a lot. I, I clearly, I think, they're storytelling-wise, they're telling us they're using the same technique. Like, we risked it like they risked it. We, you know, visually and, and th thematically, it's the same thing. And it makes sense to be transport because we've already mentioned it multiple times. Well, it, it should be pointed out, too, that a lot of the debris that they have they encounter in this thing, it does appear to be Federation. Even to the point where one's mentioned, a, wa a, a Wanderer class. I got, I got a picture here, Stuart, one of the first ones. And uh, I've enhanced it a little bit. And clearly that nacelle is Discovery Era. And if you see it in motion, it's even more obvious. It's got the same shape, same style facade. Um, and while everything is really hard to see, you know, the second picture again, you can see it's got that very similar nacelle bump at the top. That could even just be a literally a Discovery nacelle. And as you sort of go through the pictures, they're all rectangles. They've all got very similar pylon. They're all the same color. Many of them, if you look closely, have the same sort of facade front. So I think it's fair to say they just ripped up a few Discovery ships and threw them in the corridor. I didn't notice these when they're flying by on screen, really. Um, it's, it's when you capture them and stuff that you kind of see the details, which I appreciate they put some of this in. So It's like certain things you just can't take as visual canon. I'm not going to take as visual canon. All the, you know, the record happens to be plugging up the transport network between Planet and Federation happened to a 22nd century ships we've never seen again. I'm not going to say that's canon. You know, it's here. But it's absurd and it's not true. Kind of called. It would be nice to see wreckage from other ships, though, like a Borg Cube remnants or something. Or a Prometheus um, Sovereign that would have been nice as like an Easter egg thing. I mean, these models are easily accessible from them by Eagle Moss. Everyone's at a time crunch, but if you knew you're doing this months ago, you ask them for a model, it takes about a day or two to convert it, boom, 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 or you build a low poly model. We've talked about this before. They choose what they put effort into. and uh, But we've said before, and my favorite sort of theory about this whole thing is that. The, they, there was a, another Borg resurgence in, let's say, the 2600s, 2800s. And they also used Transwarp as being their main thing. And so the only way Federation could kind of keep them at bay was to clutter and destabilize Transwarp network as a sacrifice, but it you know kept them safe. And so they filled it. And then that would be fun to have most of the debris be Borg because it destroyed lots and lots of Borg ships along the road. Now, those are part of the, the situation keeps it in a sta constant state of moving through the conduit. So now, if you go in the conduit, you're, f you're f faced with hundreds of Borg ships worth of debris. And so no one travels it. Boom, you just took them out of the equation. And it's such a simple solution. And it's kind of, and, and, you know, wouldn't that be harsh? It's like, you know, Vance, etc. It's like, if only we, if only we hadn't destroyed the transport network 150 years ago or 300 years ago just for the burn. It's like, that... I, mean, I know we saved the quadrant, but boy, wish we had a plan B there, you know? Because it would have been so much easier. Yeah, no, that that's an actually great way to to think about defeating the Borg. I mean, if they're if they're or at least stopping you, them in that aggressive stance. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, even if it's the result of just pulling in derelict ships via tractor beam into transwarp and letting them go. Well, I mean, um, that would explain why they're all old. They they threw in the you know. All their old ships, because then you know no one's using Discovery or ships at that point. But it, but it's interesting because the, the one thing associated with Borg ships being huge, and so of course debris is going to be the most dangerous thing. You got to think of solutions to these problems. Like you think it'd be possible to send a ship in, tractor a large chunk, exit transwarp with the chunk with you, and just kind of do it that way, or even create like a tractor beam plow, which in front of the ship kind of pushes stuff. I don't know. There should be a way to like be able to clear these corridors. And is it? Are they static in the corridor, uh, just sitting there? Like, I don't understand the process of what's going on. So yeah, because our um, ship's moving forward, therefore is the other ship moving forward too? Back, yeah. It, I'm assuming, and it've been kind of a cool shot. I'm assuming the Viridian just kept firing its guns, because that's another solution. I mean, just, just, yeah, just shoot it. Just shoot forwards. Go slower. Shoot forward, and you, you know, shields at max, because you can probably, you know take all the power from the shields from the back, put it in the front, fire forward. They've got a lot of guns. So I could see them doing that. But I would assume there would be, you know, thousands of bits of debris and therefore you can't do that all the time. I mean, how much energy does that take? Quite a lot. But if you're trying to go from A to B, and clearly it's extremely fast. We were led to believe in the context of the season that this 
Veruben Nebula, with Veruben, is so far away that once that first scout ship, science ship was there, it was too far to even remotely detect, scan, or even think about. You know, the distress call didn't get close. So it's that far, and while our range isn't massive with Starfleet, it's certainly not short. But if it's both spore drive and transorpable in a minute, that means transorp is damn quick. And so that 50-50 chance, that bad piloting, I mean, you imagine the courier, he's thinking, right, I either get some dilithium from the chain, it takes me three weeks at warp, or I can trans risk transwarping, I'll get there. Okay, I'm there. Imagine being teased that way. Same amount of power being generated by your warp coils, you know, transport coils, same amount of power, but you may just die. Yeah, and with a, with a small courier ship, you would just imagine that the weapons wouldn't be as powerful to take out larger chunks of debris, but Osiris, yeah. Just pummel ahead. And, and to our context, you know, the fact they go into 20% shields in a travel that takes less than a minute tells you how dangerous it is. But then if you can survive less than a minute a very far distance, 20% shield, why can't you go half that distance? I mean, obviously, it, it's random debris. There's no sense it'll be the exact same thing. But, you know, they got a very, very far distance, and I'm sure the more seconds, the more distance. So if you only want to go 10 seconds, um, maybe you can survive 10 seconds of maneuvering. Okay, now you've got 150 light years. It seems like a very practical thing to travel through, especially with a small ship, especially with a ship like books. And if we know a reconfigurable ship is the, is the way of the future. Well, that's the other thing, like with the whole, what's going on with the debris, is it just sitting there static or is it kind of slowly rotating, sending a, dr a probe through that can map it? Because if if there's, those things are traveling through Transwarp, eventually, yeah, but eventually they're going to, they're, what are they going to, just loop back around and start go the other way? Like, they got to go somewhere, right? Like, I don't, I, I don't buy what's going on here. Um, and you would think, if you know that, say, we want to make the Navarre Suffolk HQ motorway, or freeway, right? It's going to take us 36 seconds at Transwarp, because again, this Viridian, uh, Ruben Nebit is further than Navarre. Or easily, because they can get a real-time signal to Navarre. They can't tell the place, so we know that. So less than a minute to transport there, probably 30 seconds or 24 seconds. Why can they have, like, two buoys that have automatic weapons that can shoot debris either side, and they just do these quick motorway things where it's seconds to travel, and they've all got things just clearing that one segment? You know what I mean? Once you start saying it, it's like it's not an issue yeah. show. And the smaller the smaller the debris gets over time, the more you use the corridor, the smaller the debris gets, the more the deflector shields just treat it like it's you know space debris, space dust, micro you know micro meteors, and they just bounce off, and eventually they'll be clear, you know. So because yeah, you, you basically need a time jump. If it took minutes or hours, that's one thing, but it took minutes and seconds. Transwarp is very fast, but it's not clear that dangerous. It's risky and it's annoying, and it sounds like for bigger ships it might be a bit of an issue. Um, but but shuttles, yeah. I mean people, especially since like sending scout ships to go visit old, um, you know, colonies, very practical. Like I said, send holograms. It's just frustrating because I can see them. You know, a, ship, a planet is under attack. They'd help now, and they say we'll get there in three weeks, and they're saying please just risk transwarp. It'll take you. You'll be here in thirty six seconds. Please risk it. You know. Now nah, we won't risk it, and they come down and destroy it. It's like, oh, I've only tried Transwarp. It's like, Are you kidding? We we just painted this ship. We don't want it to get dinged up and scuffed up. And and this isn't a problem necessarily with the show. It's just there's a a slight disconnect, and it, you know it, it's like when you create the AI in season two, which needs data to become an AI, but to show it as a threat, you have to show it being a fully sentient AI already, which makes every time they say data to become an AI, well, it's already a fully functional AI. Makes it a completely redundant statement. It detracts from your point of your season because it's already achieved the goal clearly. And what more sentient can you get? You know, it, it's 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 a thing that sets up and then falls down, and that's a problem. But it's not the big problem. But we are tech guys. We are ship guys, and I like transport personally. I'm a fan, either green or blue, depending which people or franchise. So yeah, we just wanted to point that out, guys, and point out some possible solutions, but at least we got a visual of it, because it has been alluded to a few times during the course of the season, why they can't use it, and we've speculated as to why. At least we got some kind of visual evidence to back that up, but it does seem like a lot of the debris is older ships, and uh, it's only, I, the burn happened a while ago, 120 years ago, 125 years ago, actually. Almost four, four, five generations. Longer than Vance has been alive. Keep that in context. Yeah, so this could have been, like you said, 
another hundred years before that where they tried to stop the Borg, so they littered the trans warp. That, that's a great idea. Um, so it's hard to say exactly when this happened, but it's interesting nonetheless. So we just wanted to point that out. And I can actually imagine that we've got to imagine that, yeah, there's, there's a sense of context here. If this happened, let's say, 450 years ago, right? Just like the people on the station say Navarre, not Vulcan. If it's so out of our mental or their mental state to even think about using transwarp, then you can imagine, even if it's very practical, really, like riskable, if it's just built, built into everyone saying, we're not going to do it, maybe it's kind of a cultural thing, like just don't assume you're going to because, well, oh, it hasn't been usable in 400 years. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, don't, don't want to risk it because we don't. We just don't know. We've heard rumors. <laughs> we, we just don't do it, you know. No, no fellowship has tried transwarp in over 160 years or, or you know, Although you'd think the burn would force them to try really hard. So, yeah, uh, let's not... Shit, there's even more conversation. I think we've had a good conversation. We don't need to have even more about this. <laughs> we may revisit it again at some point. We'll see. But yes, guys, leave your comments down below what you thought about this. Did you enjoy seeing this scene with the debris? Let us know what you think about, about the debris, how it happened, you know, why they're mainly Federation ships. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's a discussion to be had there. Comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any live discussions that we might be doing on things like this. And make sure that you click the no bell notification icon to all and just join us for any cool, fun things that we do in the future. And if you do, and we would love you to, and we have lots of people to join us every single live, which we love, our beautiful regulars and our guys and girls that jump in on and off. Uh, if you can super chat, that's a great way. It kind of changed our channel from being something that we were worried about, something we're content to do and always push higher to do. Uh, Super Chats are a way of funding the channel, allowing us to make all this free content every single week. I mean, you've seen how many hundreds of episodes we've made over the course of this year for the new shows, and in 2021, we're going to do just the same, but with ships and guests. Classic Trek Yards, you'll love it. So Super Chat if you can. It's great because you have that direct interaction. It isn't just a, a name and a, a, a dollar amount. It's a name, a dollar amount, and your voice. And that we really, really like. Uh, all the monthly ways, the PayPal, Patreon, and uh, joining the channel, all great monthly ways, all the free ways, of course, do help. Analytics on YouTube are a fickle mistress, as are many fickle mistresses we have. And so just liking and subscribing are good. All right, so don't be a fickle mistress, come back. And, and clean your transwarp so it's not another fickle mistress. Yeah, I gotta stop. Hashtag clean mind. transwarp. <laughs> Twitter guys, go. Anyway, yes. So until next time, sure. I'm Captain Foley. If we hashtag clean transport, we can hashtag justice for Zaheel. I'm just saying. Because it'd be quick. Justice for, justice for Zaheel went really well. Get so him. justice for Zaheel. And yes, hashtag clean transwarp. <laughs> anyway, guys, until next time, I'm Captain Foley. <laughs> I gotta go. It's fine. Bye, guys.